May 1974. The SLA has been hiding in Los Angeles for six days. They're holed up in a house on 84th Street in the middle of South Central LA. Needing supplies, Bill and Emily Harris, along with Patty, make a trip to Mel's Sporting Goods near their safe house. Here are three people who are trying to keep out of sight, right? They're on the run. They're trying to lay low. They go shopping for some supplies and equipment. What does Bill Harris do? He shoplifts. He was then, of course, grabbed by a member of the staff of the store, wrestled to the sidewalk, his gun taken away from him. One handcuff on his arms. And when he was attempting to put the second one on him, Emily Harris jumped on his back. They were wrestling around the street. Patty is waiting in the van when she sees the commotion. Patty Hurst, great presence of mind, stupid thing to do, saw what was happening, repositioned herself and began firing so they could get away. That was truly dangerous. It was the act that led to all of the other things that, that followed. It was the setup for this dramatic shootout in South Central LA. The Harrises and Patty Hearst speed away, but don't get far. A mile away, they dump their van and switch vehicles. William Harris commandeered a car and he told the person in the Pontiac, uh, get out, the SLA needs your car. With the SLA, we need your car. Get out of the car. Get out, get out. And of course, these people were interviewed and it became pretty obvious that the SLA had come to Los Angeles. The official police report noted that the SLA surfaced in the Los Angeles area in a fashion that was uncharacteristic of its prior exploits. At the shooting at, at Mills, uh, one of the employees had disarmed Bill Harris, and that gun was run through Sacramento, and the uh, identification number came back to a weapon registered to Emily Harris, who was the wife of, of Bill Harris. Every policeman in Southern California was on their trail. By sundown of the day that the sporting goods store incident happened, the SLA's abandoned microbus is quickly found by police. We all went together out there to the site, looked through all the items in the VW van in hopes of finding any clue to how we might trace these people. A cursory search of that van revealed that about two to three days prior to this day, that van had received a parking ticket at an address of 835 West 84th Street in Los Angeles. 84th Street, in one of LA's predominantly black neighborhoods, now becomes a focal point for the police. The address on the ticket is one house away from 833, where the SLA has been hiding. Except for Donald DeFries, all of the SLA soldiers are white. Neighbors on 84th Street are already suspicious. Any time that uh, there's a bunch of white activity in a predominantly black area, it, it concerns a lot of the residents there. They had, in fact, stayed at a what they thought was a safe house, decided it wasn't so safe, and moved to another. What am I supposed to do with a handcuff on? The Symbionese Liberation Army is now in disarray. While the Harrises and Patty Hearst are on the run after the shoplifting incident, DeFries and the five other fugitives abandon their safe house and look for a new hideout. From 84th Street, they roam South Central LA, ending up on 54th Street, where the residents of one house accept $100 to take them in. The SLA is now hiding 30 city blocks away from police and the FBI who continue to stake out the address on the parking ticket, 835 West 84th Street. 
it was believed by everyone, and it seemed pretty obvious, that those fugitives are somewhere in that vicinity of 835, but specific address was unknown. And we knew that if the SLA came to Los Angeles, that they probably wouldn't be leaving Los Angeles without at least being captured, because everybody was going to be after them. They set up uh, around uh, the house and uh, watched it until the uh, morning hours. Police have been chasing the SLA and Patty Hearst for three months without success. Do they have a real lead now or another dead end?